up guys and welcome back to story time with Ed. So today we're going to be reading the book Took by Mary Downing Hahn. And the question of the day is, what would you do if you were taken? Comment below. So the chapter we are going to be reading in the book Took today is chapter 1. It was a long drive from Fairfield, Connecticut to Woodville, West Virginia, two days with an overnight stay in Maryland. My sister Erica and I were sick at the back seat and I were sick of the back seat, sick of each other and mad at our parents for making us leave our home, our school and our friends. Had they asked us how we felt about moving? Of course not. They've never been the kind of parents who ask if you want to drink your milk from the red glass or the blue glass. They just hand you a glass and that's it. Milk tastes the same whether the glass is blue or red or purple. Going to West Virginia was a big thing, something we should have had a say in. But no, they left us with a neighbor, drove down there, found a house they liked, and bought it. Just like that. They were the grown-ups, the adults, the parents. They were in charge. They made the decisions. In all fairness, they had a reason for what they did. Dad worked for a big corporation. He earned a big salary. We had a big house, two big cars, and all sorts of other big stuff, expensive stuff. Erica and I went to private school. Mom didn't work. She was called a soccer mom. Driving me and Erica and our friends to games and clubs at the country club pool. She and Dad played golf. They were planning to buy a sailboat. But then the rescission came along, and the big corporation started laying people off. Dad was one of them. He thought he'd find another job fast, but he didn't. A year went by. One of our big cars was re repos repossessed. repossessed. Erica and I went to public school, public school. We gave up the country club. There was no more talk about sailboats. The bank started sending letters, credit card companies called dad and mom were maxed out financially the mortgage company threatened foreclosure so we had to sell the house i can understand that but why did we have to move to west virginia it was so cheaper to live there dad said erica and i would love it so much space woods and fields and mountains he took to he took he took to singing country roads, and old John Denver sang song about West Virginia, putting lots of emphasis on almost heaven, West Virginia. He also informed us that the license plate said wild wonderful, wild wonderful. So here we were on an interstate highway with nothing to see but mountains and woods, wild but wonderful, in my opinion. It was like being in a foreign country. How would I ever get used to all the nature surrounding us? Beside me, Erica was talking to the doll Mom had given her, not because it was her birthday or anything, but because she was so unhappy about leaving Fairfield. That's rewarding bad behavior. If you ask me, I was just as unhappy as my sister. But since I didn't cry myself to sleep and mope my, in my room and refused to eat, all I got was a pair of binoculars and Peterson's field guide to birds of North America. Dad thought I might like to identify the birds we were sure to see when we got when we went hiking. Well, maybe I would, but still, the doll was ten times more expensive than my binoculars. It came with a little chunk full of clothes. Then there were even outfits in my sister's size so she and the doll could dress alike. It had its own bed, too, and its hair was just like the Erica's and cut the same way. All the... All the time we were in the van, Erica talked to the doll. She tried all its clothes on and took the doll and told the doll how pretty it was. She hugged it and kissed it. She even named it Little Erica. It was making me sick. But every time I complained, Erica got mad and we started quarreling and Mom turned around and blamed it all on me. Leave your sister alone, Daniel, she'd say. She's perfectly happy playing with little Erica. Read a book or something. You know I can't read in the car. Do you want me to barf all over that stupid doll? 
At last, we turned off the interstate. The roads narrowed and ran up and down hills, crossed fields, past farms, and tunneled through woods. We glimpsed mountains and swift rivers. The towns were farther apart and smaller, some no more than a strip of houses and shops along the road. By the time Dad finally pulled off an unpaved road and headed down a narrow driveway, the woods around us were dark. In the van... In the van's headlights, the trees looked like a stage set lit by spotlights. The van bounced over ruts and bumps, tossing Erica and me toward and away from each other. Stay on your side, Daniel, Erica said, and stop banging into me and little Erica. We don't like it. That doll doesn't care. She's not real. She is so... Be quiet, Daniel, Mom said. It's not my fault, I said. Instead of blaming me, tell Dad to slow down. Just then, we came out of the woods, and I got my first view of the house. It stood in the middle of a field of tall grass, weeds actually, even in the dark. I could see that the place was a wreck. I could see that the place was a wreck. The porch staged under the weight of vines growing up the walls and across the roof. Tall, shaggy bushes blocked most of the windows on the first floor. Shutters hung crooked crooked some were missing altogether i was sure it hadn't been painted for a long time erica was the first to speak it's scary what's scary about it dad asked it's dark she hung her doll tightly the woods are scary too and there aren't any other houses wait until morning erica mom said it's lovely in the daylight you'll see and we have a few neighbors down the road dad added how far down the road i wondered and what were they like dad and mom got out of the van and headed toward and headed toward the house erica ran to catch up and slipped her hand into mom's i followed them breathing in the unfamiliar smell of the woods and listened to night sounds wind rattled branches and hissed through the weeds in the field a a shutter banged against the side of the house an owl called from the woods at the same moment something made the hair on my neck rise sure that someone was watching us i turned around and stared down the dark driveway i saw no one but i shivered and not because i was cool the old woman stands on the hilltop at the edge of the woods well hidden from the farmhouse below just as she did before but now it's a dark cold night lit by the moon all around her bushes and branches rattle in a wood in the wind that carries autumn's breath but she isn't cold she leans on her staff and peers toward the road they're coming she calls to her companion she snorts and continues snuffling about in the dead leaves for good things to eat headlights bounce down the driveway a big car stops by the house even in the dark a person can see that it's a ram's shackle wreck of a place ready to topple with the first strong wind that comes its way the car doors open and the interior lights come on she sees the girl just the one she needs the child gets out clutching a dolly the old woman sniffs fear the girl is scared of the dark in the old house she doesn't want to live here well she won't live here long will she the girl's name is blown by the wind across the dark field and laid at the woman's feet erica erica she likes to draw the name out especially like the last syllable Erica, Erica, the old woman whispers. The name glides lightly through the air, a rustle of black silk thread, and winds itself into the girl's ear. She sees the girl tense and looks around, move closer to her mother. Yes, the old woman hisses. You'll do, Erica, Erica. She does one of her little jigs and calls to her companion time to go dear boy we'll see her soon don't you worry she's the one she's ours as the family enters their new home the old woman and her companion wrap themselves in darkness and make their way home well that is the end of chapter one in the book took written by mary doning Hahn. 
hope you guys come back to Storytime with Ed, and don't forget to subscribe, turn on your post notification bell, like, and comment on the question of the day. I will be checking the comment section and hopefully replying back. Stay tuned for more, but Ed's out. Oh, 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 oh,